Welcome to this week's edition of The Blitz. On today's show, we will have running backs coach Kermit Bugs and his redshirt sophomore back Max DiLorenzo. Jody Ambrosio will be on for a view from the booth as we look back at our last game against SMU and preview our next opponent, the Temple Owls. So thanks for tuning in. And now, The Blitz. All right, Joe, back from your trip to SMU, did you enjoy a taste of Dallas down there? Well, actually, what we did on Friday night, Em, was we went to the men's soccer game in the AAC semifinals. The legendary former coach Joe Moroni was there. We got to spend the night with him up in a sweep at Toyota Suite at Toyota Stadium. We saw Ray Reed's team score a 2-0 win over UCF, so Friday night was good. All the sports in Texas. Absolutely. Got we tried. Well done. We All right, tried. let's break down the football game yes. now. A 38-21 to 21 loss to the Mustangs. We saw some fight in our Huskies, though. What was your overall impression? I thought I thought they played their best game in a while, Emily. I thought the offense showed more cohesion. I thought after some early jitters, I thought Casey Cochran played well to those two picks in the fourth quarter. I thought the running game was the best that it's been, obviously, in a long time. Both Lyle and Max, who I know we're having on a little bit later on in the show, played, played very well. I thought the offensive line afforded Casey some protection. And I thought the defense, put in a tough situation, for the most part, played pretty well. I mean, they throw the ball so much that it's hard to have great numbers against them. I thought, you know, overall, I thought of a better performance by the Huskies, but obviously not good enough to win. All right, let's talk a little bit more about one of those factors that you brought up, the biggest change that we saw, Casey Cochran. Throwing for 227 yards and two touchdowns, played a smart game, like you mentioned, uh, no interceptions until those last two drives. What did you think of his performance specifically? Well, I thought at the start, I thought he just looked a little bit nervous. His throws were off, and one of the things that the coaches had talked to us about during the week was his accuracy. But as he got into the rhythm of the game, as he started to find people, I thought he made some really good throws. I thought his touchdown pass to Jeremy Day Davis was probably the best pass we've seen all year from a UConn quarterback. And of course, Jeremy's so athletic, that made the whole play work. But I think overall, I think from midway through the first quarter to maybe the 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter, I think it was the best stretch of quarterbacking we've seen from UConn this season. And defensively, as you mentioned, we did look good. Gave up just 107 rushing yards. Uh, were great on third down and notched a couple of sacks. What was the difference in the defense's play? I thought aggression. I thought the defense tackled a little bit better than they have in, in recent games. Uh, in the fourth quarter, they got a little bit of pressure on Gilbert. They had two sacks in one drive. And I thought the key defensively, Emily, was they stayed in their lanes. Gilbert's is almost as effective with his legs as he is with his arm. And other than that 23 scamper yard scamper that set up their first touchdown, they pretty much kept him in check. So I just think Hank Hughes' kids played with a little more cohesion. I think they understood their assignments. And a kid like Byron Jones had a terrific game, 11 tackles. He's left on an island out there. I thought Byron played especially well. Definitely great to see them put some of those pieces yeah, together exactly. this weekend. Yeah, exactly. All right, great, Joe. We'll check back with you a little bit I later. I look forward to it as always. Nice jacket, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, let's take a look now back at highlights from UConn versus SMU.
It's time now for Coach's Corner. We are joined by running backs coach Kermit Bugs. Thanks for coming back on the show, Coach. I'm glad to be here. All right, now we've seen this running game grow throughout the season and really be a vital part of this offense now. Where have you seen the most growth with your running backs on game day? Basically understanding where the holes are going to be, understanding the line schemes, uh, knowing the blocking schemes or where, how holes are going to open up. So those guys have been studying hard, watching film a lot, and have gotten them you know, much better at understanding what they're watching, and uh, it's, it's paying off. And we rushed for 158 yards this weekend. Max DiLorenzo found the end zone for a touchdown. What kind of things can you do with a dual attack with two running backs that are so strong like those two guys? Um, basically, what we try to do is multiply the carries by setting them apart. Um, actually, those guys have certain situations that they're in the game, um, so that'll be good for those guys. And, and they, we try to play to their strengths based upon what our running attack is for the, for the week. And let's talk a little bit about Max DiLorenzo. We'll have him on the show later. It's been really fun watching him grow throughout the season and become such an integral part of this offensive attack. What do you like about coaching Max? Max is a good guy. He is real attentive to what's going on. Um, he's really hard nosed about going after things and getting his playing time, and he's worked hard. And so he's, he's coming out and being beneficial for him. All right, next up we will travel to Temple, a team that gives up nearly 200 rushing yards per game. From what you've seen on film of them, what are you focusing on with your guys for that attack? Just making sure we understand their, their blitz concepts, um, where they're trying to get to, what they're trying to attack, you know, versus the formations. Making sure we can take advantage of that. Um, we're just going to go out there and just run hard and try to get our four yards of carry and, and see how it goes. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. We'll see you down in Philly this weekend. Thank you for having me. All right, let's head out to campus now for a little Know Your Foe. We are here outside of the Yukon Co-op for this week's edition of Know Your Foe, where we will stop people on campus to find out how much they know about our next opponent, the Temple Owls. Who is Yukon football playing this weekend? Uh, they're playing Temple. Temple. Temple Owls. Temple University. Uh, Temple University. <laughs> they are playing Temple. What is their mascot? Owls. It's a bird of some sort. Uh, scientists have been working on the question for some time, but uh, we believe they're going to they're gonna find the answer by this weekend. A bell? I have no idea. Oh, like a Liberty Bell? Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Owls. <coughs> owls. Temple owls. The mascot is an owl. What is the name of their mascot? Ooh, Abilly? Gertrude? That's a great question. It's more along the lines of the noise that it makes. Ooh, man. <laughs> Hoot? I, is it? Who's... Uh, who, who? Who? Hoot? Hootie? Hootie. Hooter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hooter. Yeah. Hooter the hootie. Ho Hooter. Hooter the owl. Hooter the owl. The hootie, hooter, hooters? Hooters or... <laughs> Hoots. Hooter. Yeah. Hooter. <laughs> yeah, of course. Hooter T. Owl is the name. Hooter T. Owl. Yeah. Sounds official. What are Temple's colors? Uh, red, white, and a touch of black from time to time. Red and black. Dark, uh, like, like, um, what kind of red? Red. Yep. And white? Yeah. Um, red and white or something like that. Yeah. The colors are red and white. Cherry and white. He knew that it was cherry. Okay. Yes. Now, Temple student. There you go. We got an insider. Where is it located? I know it's in Philly. Yeah. Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's located in uh, Morristown, New Jersey. Philadelphia. And what state is that in? Pennsylvania. It's located in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. And where is Philadelphia located? Southeastern Pennsylvania. It's known for cheese steaks. Oh, Philadelphia, of yeah. course. <laughs> All right. Which two important documents were signed in Philadelphia? Oh, God, the Constitution and uh, the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, that's right. Oh, history major. <laughs> Are you really? No. <laughs> that would be the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution. Declaration of Independence, Constitution. Um, the Declaration of Independence and I'm assuming the Constitution as well. Uh, Bill of Rights and Declaration of Independence. Declaration of Independence and the go with uh, it's the other big one. Um, all right, the dictionary. 
<laughs> what NFL stadium do the Temple Owls play in? Lincoln. Yeah. Oh. Would it be uh, where the Eagles play? Uh, Lincoln Financial. Then they must play at the Steelers Stadium. No, they must not. The Eagles. Eagles. Yeah. Oops. You can tell me the team. I don't even know the team. Um, do you know the NFL team in Philadelphia? Oh, the Eagles? Yeah. Ah. Geno's or Pats? Pats? <laughs> huh? Do you understand what that question means? No. Geno's or Pats? Is that a preference question? Geno's or Pats? What? Geno's. Uh, Geno's. Why? You have to know how you're ordering it, or they don't give it to you. It's the best. Geno's, definitely Geno's. We don't want Pat Summit. Geno's. Why do you pick Geno's? Geno <laughs> Genos, the name of our basketball coach since the stakes all eat as well. We have redshirt sophomore running back Max DiLorenzo on the show today. Thanks for being here today. Yep, finally. About time I'm here. Well, you've certainly earned it. You had your first career offensive touchdown against Cincinnati and notched another this weekend against SMU. How has it felt for you to really come out this year and be such a role player for this team? It felt good, you know, last year I was, you know, just whatever, but this year I feel like my role's increased on the team and it's it's been fun and been good, but obviously our record isn't isn't the best and isn't what we want it to be. Well, you've certainly gotten more touches this season, especially in the last few games, but where have you seen the most growth in yourself since you arrived here at UConn? I think just becoming a lot more mature and, uh, you know, being a better practice player, learning how to practice, watching film. Um, looking through, you know, their opponent's defense. And I think that's a big part from these past two and a half years, and I need to continue doing for the next two years as well. And now you're a CT kid from Berlin. How have you enjoyed being able to play in state? Do you get to have a lot of family and friends come to these games? I do. It's a little tough for tickets, but I manage, and it's great, especially the Michigan game, Louisville game, you know, national TV, great atmosphere, little, little celebs in the, in the stands. <laughs> Always nice. It, it was great. And as you look at those last few games on the schedule, and we've seen the way that this team has been building through the last few games, how do you feel like this team can finish off this season? You know, I think 3 and all our schedule is in favor of that. Um, although we have some negatives, there's also been a lot of positives. You know, our line's been playing really well. Casey did a, a great job last week, and I feel like we showed a lot of fight and uh, want to in the second half of last week. So I feel like if we could just put that together, for 60 minutes, um, you know, sky's the limit. All right, Max, well, we know that you're evasive on the field, but we're going to put you through our test in a game uh, that we call three and out. Three and out. All right, Max, how it works is I will ask you three questions, and you give me the first answer that comes to mind. Then we'll do it again, three and out, about your teammates. You ready to go? Yep, put me on the spot, but let's do it. All right, here we go. What is your favorite late-night snack? Greek yogurt. Oh, very healthy. If you could have a shopping spree in any store, what would it be? Ooh, Nike or Polo. Okay, good choices. Maybe yeah. go to the outlet and hit them both. Yep, hit them both. Okay, what is your favorite board game? <sighs> Monopoly. Okay, classic. Yep. Very nice. All right, three and out about your teammates. Which of your teammates is the worst with technology? Oh, Taylor Mac. Awful. <laughs> that was easy. Why? He's got a phone, and it's the size of an iPad, and he... <laughs> Never texts, calls you back. He's always messing around on his computer. Well, that's technology, but it, he's just the worst. Okay, fair enough. Uh, which teammate would be the best talk show host? Really putting me on the spot. <laughs> best talk show host. <laughs> Someone who's good at relationship advice or always entertaining. Cole Wagner. Okay, why? He, anytime I want to tame I go to Cole. Okay. Okay, nice. Last question. What is one thing that you want Husky fans to know about your good buddy, Taylor Mack, who's bad at technology? <laughs> he thinks he's Kevin Hart. Oh, how so? He just, you know, he's a little guy. Which he, he plays tough, I'll give him that. But he tries to make jokes and he sounds a lot like Kevin Hart. It's just 
That's who he wants to be. He's the funny guy. Yeah, he's the funny guy. He uh, thinks, thinks he's funny. Thinks he's funny. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for making your debut here on the Blitz, Max. Go get him down in Philly. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, now let's head back to a view from the booth. We're back now with a view from the booth. Time to break down Temple. They're 1-9, and nine, but the record doesn't say it all with this team. They've played three ranked teams this season, and three of their losses came in the last minute of the game. What is your take on the Owls? I think, as you said, Emily, they're better than their record would indicate. They've had leads in five second halves of games. To take that by comparison, UConn hasn't led in the second half of a game since the Michigan game, which is pretty mind-boggling. But uh, the Owls made a coaching change when Steve Adazio left, Matt Rule is in now. They made a quarterback change five games ago to P.J. Walker, and their offense has really been pretty effective since he got in there. You just don't know what Temple's mindset will be after the way they lost to UCF. Will they be inspired that they play well, or will they be frustrated that they had another late, last-minute loss? And let's talk a little bit more about that quarterback that you mentioned, P.J. Walker, a true freshman who threw for 382 yards, four touchdowns, and he's 75% in the red zone. What's your takeaway from the offense? He's given them spark. I mean, obviously, he's had two games of over 300 yards. He threw for 360-something or somewhere like that in their, in their loss to SMU. He's got some real talented receivers. The kid, Robbie Anderson, had 184 yards and two touchdowns against Central Florida. They play a pro spread. They're going to try to get the ball out. Their running game is okay, not great, but Walker, um, another dual threat quarterback, there's a lot of them in this conference who UConn will have to make sure he doesn't beat them with his legs as well as his arm. And defensively, they're not as strong. They have the worst defense in the league statistically, but they have that one standout, their linebacker, Tyler Matichevic, who led the nation in tackles just a couple weekends ago. He's a Connecticut kid who right. played against Casey Cochran in high school. How big of a threat is he? He had a great game against UConn last year when Temple beat the Huskies at the, at the rent. He plays with aggression. You can tell by the way he plays in the games that he, he's a good practice player. Uh, him and Nate Smith, one of the other linebackers, are very, very good. UConn's got to make sure they uh, they account for Matikevich all year long. He's changed his number. If you saw him last year at the rent, you'll see him wear number eight on Saturday night if you're sitting by your computer. Um, you can't let a kid like that dominate the game. It's the strategy defenses are starting to use against Yao and Smallwood. They got to try to work away from him and you've got to make sure that you don't turn the ball over. All right, and we've seen the progress throughout the season. The pieces have coming together. We have a winnable game this weekend. What are the keys to making sure that we get that W? No mistakes. Turnover free football is, is imperative. And again, I, and this sounds like a broken record, Emily, but you've got to get a lead. UConn hasn't led since the 1150 mark of the South Florida game. That's over. That's almost 282 minutes of football without a lead. You'd like to see them get in front because the way Temple has lost recently, you would think that if you get a lead on them, you might be able to demoralize them. All right, great. Well, the Huskies will take on the Owls on Saturday, November 23rd. The game is at 7 o'clock, and you can watch it on ESPN3 and, of course, listen on WTIC News Talk 1080. Yeah, it should be a great weekend if people want to make the short drive four hours to Philadelphia. Let's be realistic. There will be plenty of good seats available. You can go down. Philly's a great time, and maybe root the Huskies on to their first one of the season. The kids are still playing hard, and I think the fans have to understand that. Yeah, we'd love to have that support down there or watching or listening as right, well. very important. <laughs> so thanks for Tuning into the Blitz with Jody Ambrosio. I'm Emily Noonan for Huskies All Access. We'll see you out there.